Welcome back, everyone, to episode 69 of the Post Post Podcast. With me, as always, is my co-host, Chris Ronan. How are we doing tonight, bud? Good, man, good. I'm loving these playoff matchups. Everything's getting gritty and grimy, and I love to see it. Love it. Love it. Every whistle, every fight, somewhat. Scram, scramble, I don't know. Yeah, that's one thing that bothers me about all this. The, the way the game is gone, there's just no one's actually willing to drop the gloves and stand up for their teammate, and it's just grab a partner, tie him up, stick a glove in his face, and, and that's enough. That, yeah. That's what that's all we need right now, I guess. Make it look I don't good. know. I Make can't stand good. it personally, but yeah. just just drop them. Yeah. Drop, something's gonna happen. You're in the playoffs. I, I think there's like there, there's certain things that you should drop them for, but there's also certain things that we don't need to get in each other's grill every time that he covers the puck. You right. know what I mean? Like it's understandable if like, hey, you got too close and yeah. you're jabbing at him, but it doesn't have to be every time that he covers the puck. I have to no. come after you. You know? No. That's that's at least what I've seen out of the first two or three games in each series, but. We're going to cover some uh, end-of-the-season stuff, some notes that we're going to get to, and some stuff for next season, too, honestly. Yeah. Um, and then later on this episode, we are going to get into the playoff talk. So you want to kick it off? Uh, let's do it. So kicking off with the Seattle Kraken, uh, they came out and said sold, they sold out every game this season. One of the three worst teams in the league in their inaugural season. Six other teams also sold out their arenas this season as well, which is Vegas, Nashville, Minnesota, Boston, Tampa Bay, and Washington. But it's cool as hell to see Seattle sell out every game for how bad they were this season. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that there hasn't been a market there in so long, and now the, the city, the state, honestly, has a team to go to, someone much closer by. Right. Um, so it's, it's really good to see, honestly. I'm, I'm proud of it. It's cool, it's cool seeing the fans. They all have, like, the uh, the octopus and the squids hats and everything, too. Yeah, there, there were a bunch of diehards. And something that doesn't really get considered when it comes to selling out stadiums and stuff is the corporate aspect of it. A lot of seats are bought up by corporate businesses to give to their employees, to give to uh, business partners, things like that. So I really hope that it wasn't empty seats in that sense because that does sometimes happen quite right. a bit. Uh, I think the Boston Red Sox had the longest run in sports history of sold-out arenas, right. and they were all just like, we'll just sell the tickets, people will buy them, or, or we'll buy them ourselves and say that we sold it out. So it was kind of all a gimmick, but mm -hmm. I, I hope that it wasn't that for Seattle because the city deserves better. That's right. what I think. 100%. Uh, yeah, I feel like that's even might be even crazier for baseball with like what two hundred plus games. Am I wrong? Something like that. Yeah, and exactly. Selling every single every mm -hmm. game out, but so Boston it, again is just you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's much harder to do something like that when it's 182 regular season games, but right. to to fake it and to just maintain that record just to do it is is kind of annoying. I don't like that. Right. But. Did you want to move on to uh, Detroit here? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something going on. Yeah, keep it going. All right. <clears throat> so Detroit Red, Detroit Red Wings. There we go. I was doing good for a few episodes, and now I'm back at it. They announced they will not renew the contracts of head coach Jeff Blagil, uh, sorry, Blagil, assistant coach Doug Howda, and goalie coach Jeff Salajko. Um, we're going to follow that up, too, with the Winnipeg following Detroit. The Winnipeg Jets announced they will not bring back head coach Dave Lowry or assistant coaches Jamie Compen, uh, Compen, right, and Charlie Huddy. And then also Philadelphia Flyers will not be bringing back Mike Yeo as their head coach next season. So a lot of moves already, and it's just the beginning of the playoffs. Chi get the Yeo. Yep. Yeo. Mike, Mike Yeo. Mike um, Yeo. But, yeah, there is a lot of coaching changes going on with these teams that do not end up making the playoffs, and that happens every season. Yep. Uh, definitely a nice change of pace for Detroit. Winnipeg, man, I don't know what's going on there. It seems like there's kind of a culture issue, rumors of Mark Shifley wanting out, um, a lot of issues in the locker room, I guess. It's all kind of like hearsay right now, but we'll see what ends up happening this offseason. If, if Shifley moves, you're going to see a full rebuild in Win Winnipeg, and that'll bring in a lot of nice assets for that team. Right. And the Philadelphia Flyers moving on from Mike Yo is, is kind of interesting. Um, I, I don't really know where or what Philly is going to do next season, but as we all know, something needs to change there. So. Something. That's we'll, what I we'll got there. We'll see how they do in the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just saying yeah, just say yeah, or yeah, we'll see how they do in the playoffs. Right, we'll just they're they're going to do, do pretty well yeah, this year, I'd, I'd say. I'll think they'll get there. Maybe, maybe second round, right? Seems like it could be the end for uh, Keith Yandel as well. I don't know if he'll be returning next season too. Oh yeah, that's so true. That kind of sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on from those three, the Calgary Flames. Johnny Goudreau finished uh, the 2021-2022 season with 90 even strength points in 82 games. The list of players with 90-plus even strength points since 1990 are Wayne Gretzky with 103, 
Mario Lemieux with 96, Yarma Yaga with 95, and Goudreau with his 90. <clears throat> to add to his season, he also finished with the NHL best plus 64 rating, which is the highest plus uh, minus rating in a season by any player since Wayne Gretzky in 1987 when he had a plus 69 rating. Uh, Johnny Hockey getting it done. Yeah, this is all very impressive. He really put the team on his back in Calgary. Made his uh, made his mark there this year out of all the years, I'd say. He's in the talks with, like, Austin Matthews and um, who's the other one? Connor McDavid for league MVP for this season. And I think he has a very good case with the team around him. And, yeah, I think that's um, that's about it on, on Johnny Hockey. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of cool to see. He's yeah. a lot smaller than a lot of the uh, the guys in Ca in. Uh, oh, yeah. In the NHL too, which is cool to see. He's getting it done, kind of yeah. not as small as a Marty St. Louis, but same kind of realm. Right. It's 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 yeah. It's definitely Johnny's one of those where just like you, they get like a on ice view of him next to like another player. You're like, damn, I didn't realize they were that small. You know. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think that's what gives him a little bit more speed and a li little bit more maneuverability, entry into the zone, all those kind of things. He can kind of water bug around certain hits and and right. be available. Yep. Hundred <clears> percent. <throat> Uh, to stay on the Calgary um, topic, uh, bef before playoffs began, Eric Goodbranson and Blake Coleman got into a bit of a scrum during practice. Daryl Sutter on the incident. It's good. It's a contact sport. We need more guys like that. Uh, How do you feel about that? Um, I really like Daryl Sutter's comments here, and I think that it's definitely good to see because they have that kind of grit and grind to them. It's a little close to playoffs, in my opinion, to be having something like this. Yeah. But it's always good for the locker room to get it out now and to understand that everyone's trying to do their best out here and, and we all have that competitive nature in us and we're ready to work as a team together yeah. and call each other out where we need to. Mm -hmm. uh, if you ask me, though, the, the biggest takeaway of this is Shades of St. Louis, I think. Remember when they were dead last in the league the first, the year that they won the cup, middle oh, of the yeah, season? That's right. There was a big scrap. I forget who got involved, but there was an actual fist fight on the ice on that, on that team. This seemed more of like a, a scrum per the new NHL, but... I thought, yeah. I thought it was interesting to see, and, and Daryl Sutter's comments on him made sense. Yeah, there's a clip of it right behind the goalie in practice, and it just, it seemed like one of those might have been like a shit talk or someone saying, hey, like, you know, you got to get your shit together with this, and people, and they took offense to it, and Daryl Sutter is just like, good, let it, let it out, figure things out, and get better, you know? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. We just, did just how guys work. Yeah, yep. definitely. We did have another e bug situation in the NHL, and these are always fun to watch. This one though was a little bit awkward, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Dallas versus Anaheim. The e bug Thomas Hodges is actually the Dallas emergency backup goaltender, and he got to play in a game for Anaheim versus Dallas. He ended up losing four to two. Uh, played net for Anaheim against Dallas. I think he was only beat by one puck, and then he got to the locker room and had a nice celebration with the Ducks players. But the post game interview was a little weird, like. He just he, he's kind of like a life insurance salesman, I think. Another office guy, kind of like a David Ayers. Yeah. Um, was it David Ayers? Yeah. Or I, I forget. Think it, it I'm was, getting them mixed yeah. up. No, I think you're right with David Ayers. Yeah, I thought it was a Chicago guy. David Ayers was the Zamboni driver. I oh forget. yeah, you're right. There was a, uh, the there was Chicago guy was a salesman during the week too, I think. But um, yeah, he kind of uh, seemed a little awkward. Um, this Hodges guy also was having a bit of a panic attack before he went on the ice, and then. The interviews were a little awkward, but I thought he, he played really well. It, it was good, and I think that teams understand when they have an e-bug in the net, they kind of got to pack it in and just give them, like, good clear line of sight for shots and yeah. try to get in front of the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he uh, th in that interview, he was just like, yeah, all the guys came to him, They're like, listen, just have fun out there, don't worry about the shots, you know. <clears throat> You're an e-bug. You're not – not really on yeah. the team, so it's just like, yeah. you know, I guess you got to make him feel good because you're the other team's goalie, basically, so you're just like, hey, stop a few shots for us even though you don't want to, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he, he is, the, like, a practice goalie for, for the NHL team, so he's used to seeing those caliber shots in yeah. practice. I just think that once you're on the ice and in a game situation, it's a little bit different, but, yeah, I thought it was really cool to see. Yeah, I really liked it. He was, uh, it was, he is an awkward kid, by the way. Yeah, you could, you could see it, but yeah. good for him getting it together and getting out there. I mean, I, I thought the game was really good, and even though they lost, it, it was it was a good matchup, so yeah. that was fun. Uh, moving on from that, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs. Austin Matthews has won the Rocket Rashad Trophy for the second year in a row and finished the season with 60 goals. 
Um, the Rocket Rashad Trophy is a trophy rewarded to NHL's top goal scorer, or the Maurice, uh, sorry, Maurice Rocket Rashad Trophy. Uh, four players, Matthew, uh, uh, Matthews, Leon Dreisaitl with 55, Chris Crado with 52, and Ovechkin with 50 broke the 50-goal barrier this season. An additional 13 players had 40 more goals this season with Kirill Kaprizov with 47 being the first player to miss the 50-goal count. Um, we were just talking about this where we feel like we've seen a lot of high points, a lot of high goals, and the fact that there's still 13 guys below this that are up there in goals too is uh, is kind of crazy to see. But congrats to Austin Matthews, two years in a row. Yeah, I think in the NHL, if you're a second or third line guy, 20 or 30 goals is like really high, and it's good to see that you can get that kind of production. 40 goals, man, that's a lot. That's and a lot. 13 players plus what four, so yeah. 17 players scored 40 or more, or more in the NHL. That's like, if you look at it in that way, it's one for every two teams in the show. Uh, and two of those guys are being Drysaddle and McDavid, so that's that's a lot of uh, that's, a lot. that's a lot of scoring. I think scoring's way up this year, as as we've talked about before. But mm. um, that's all I really got on that. Yep. So uh, yeah, that's all I really had too. But congrats, to Austin Matthews. Uh, I'm sure he appreciates it, but he's just like, nope, I'm trying to win the cup right now. Yeah, that's the main focus main for sure. Goal. Uh, moving on from Toronto, we have the Columbus Blue Jackets. Elvis Merzlikens came out and said he suffers from PTSD, and it took him a while to get used to his home arena's cannon celebration after every Columbus's goal. He goes on to mention New Year's uh, sorry New Year's fireworks celebration caused him a lot of stress, where he had to miss the following game. Uh, this all comes from the unfortunate event where Elvis lost his friend and goalie partner, Matisse Kivlenix, in a firework incident where Matisse jumped in front of Elvis and his pregnant wife to save them from the fireworks. Um, something that came out that I, I don't think we would think of, especially that cannon from uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. I'm sure something like that just brings back a lot of memories, you know? Yeah, it's definitely um, definitely an interesting scenario, and it's kind of like the only team in the NHL where they do something like that, I think. The only thing that comes to my mind is like the New England Patriots with the, the Patriots that they have in the end zone that fire the muskets. Yeah, I, I hope that that doesn't trigger any fans in the audience with their PTSD and things like that. Uh, fireworks are becoming a big hot topic nowadays, especially during COVID. It kind of seemed like a lot of people were just buying them and setting them off like any day of the week just yeah. to do it mm -hmm. and i'm on like a page that's all about everything in my town and a lot of people are complaining about that my dog doesn't like it my husband my wife like ptsd is a major thing that affects a lot more people than you realize and yep. when i first thought this i was like oh i didn't know elvis was a, a veteran and then i remembered once once i read into it i was like oh that makes a lot of sense actually with mm -hmm. the matisse kivlenic situation right. so exactly sad to see that's tough yeah especially as a goalie just like at this point now like he doesn't want to hear the cannon so it's just like it's just added pressure on him to stop that puck stop that next puck you know mainly yeah. because he doesn't want that cannon to go off so i don't know if uh well no they only fire the cannon when the home team scores Oh yeah, right. So Sorry. he wants to I, see. I, I he thinking, wants to see I, a one nothing win there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think. Sorry. I uh, completely messed that one up. But no, no, that's fine. Uh, I, I was thinking the same thing initially too. I'm like, yeah. that thing must be going off all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I want to know. I'm. I wonder if know if uh, Columbus will ever do anything about this. Will they keep the cannon going, or since it's affecting their own player? Yeah, I, I think they might look into it next season. But I do think it's a staple. Uh, thing that they have for their fans too so it's kind of like a catch-22 right um it's it's all about the fan experience at the end of the day that's where the dollars come from yeah right right like how else do you pay your players if it's with fans and if that's what's drawing the crowd or that's what people like i don't know and if your fans don't really give a fuck about you you know yeah columbus isn't the biggest hockey town in the world but maybe the fans will put something together and say hey you know what we'll we want we'll to do, do away with this for our starting goalie you know right exactly that's crazy mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> sorry we got two more uh pieces of news here before we jump into the playoffs and uh second to last one is vancouver we got brock Bessa gets asked a very personal question about his father's health and has been sorry has been during a post-game interview ends up breaking down and crying uh Bessa's father is suffering from dementia currently a very unprofessional move by the media um just it's really canadian media right now you know yeah i i didn't understand this move i get wanting to be in touch with the player and and sympathize and, and understand and try and talk to him about something like that. But that's just too big of a personal battle to ask about in front of an audience and try to get... I, I mean, I don't want to say that he asked this to try and get a response, a rise, an answer out of Besser, but 
why else do you ask? It's to get a good answer and something like that. So it's just, I don't know. I don't think the reporter had any ill intention in asking it. I just think that he should have thought about it before he brought that question brought to the table. Up. Yep, exactly. Um, huge captain move by Quinn Hughes. Uh, when he sees that Besser is kind of shook up and pausing in response, he tries to move it along and say, next question, like, right. we're not doing this right now. Besser was like, no, no, I can answer. And, and he ended up giving a good answer, but it just sucked to see him cry like that and break down. And he actually got up and ended the interview for himself, and the rest of the team left. continued. So yeah. that was tough to see, especially towards the end of a, a tough season for that team. Right, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, I, I I don't know. It's it's – you're right. You got to think about the questions you ask, and especially it's not like a personal question either. It's just like this is something that you're gonna put in like the newspapers, or mm-hmm. or the news is gonna put it up. You know, it's it's not something between you and him personally. You know, so because because he has the media pass and the relationship, he could have asked that without the whole presence and, and thing there. He could have one on one like, hey man, how's your dad doing? You yeah. know. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> moving on to the last bit of uh, news here, or something I wanted to talk about. TNT, the Stanley Cup, visited Shaquille O'Neal, Charles, Bar- Charles Barkley, and the NBA broadcast team on TNT, TNT. And Charles Barkley was asked if he wanted to raise the cup and declined. He said there's a certain rule. Uh, he would never touch a championship of any sport, and he's got brownie points from me for that. Have you ever touched a champion trophy? No, for, uh, never have. No? No. You ever taken a picture with any of them? Taking a picture with it, yeah. Yeah, which ones? When uh, when we went to the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's cool. Uh, we sat next to it and took a photo. With are it. you I able to touch actually, actually touch it? There you are. That's cool. Is it is it the one that they're handing out, or is it one of the other ones? It's uh, it was the fake one. Oh, nice. Yep, yep. Which they, I didn't realize existed. Yeah, I think we're like mid season. Well, it's it's before. actually not fake. It's one of the old ones, and they keep it at the Hockey Hall of Fame, yeah. and then they made like a replica of it, and that's the real one technically. You know what I mean? Oh, they're both real. But that's the one that stays there, and this is the one that they give out. The guy that was Pretty there cool. kind of explained it in a way that was like, yeah, this is just like not the real one. Exactly. Know? So yeah, yeah. it's not the real one, but it's also but not it fake. Also you know not what I mean? Fake. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's that's the way I would have looked at that too. But yeah, I, I remember being there, seeing it, just like I'm not gonna touch it. Yeah. No, I wouldn't have either personally. I, I took. Uh, I actually didn't get a photo with it. I don't think I took a photo of it. The uh, Frozen Four Men's Championship Trophy was the. Actually, the only one that I've been in the same room as. I, oh, really? Yeah, there were opportunities for me to go to the, I think, the State House where my mother worked for the State. Um, they had the Red Sox championship trophy there. I don't think I ever made it in to get a picture with that to be with that. Mm-hmm. And same thing, I don't think I've ever been in the same room as the Stanley Cup. So. Oh, wow, interesting. Yeah. I, I don't think I would touch them either, though, personally. No, you didn't You didn't win it, you know, but you could take a picture with it. Oh, yeah. Certain rules. There are certain rules, like never step on the logo, you know, like... Yeah, like you know, like in the middle of like usually for teams they put like a rug of the team's logo in like the middle of the locker room and people just don't fucking you don't step on it. Unless you're Justin Bieber. Touch it. Unless you're Justin Bieber and Toronto Maple Leafs. That's that's uh yeah. But want to get into the playoff talk? Yeah, let's do it. A uh, little odd stat here before we get started. There have been a lot of goalie changes during games one, two, and three, which if you've been watching have have. You know of, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, here are the salaries of some of the goalies starting games in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs. For St. Louis, we have Vili Huso, uh, 750K salary. Pittsburgh's Louis Domingue, 750K salary. Nashville's Connor Ingram, 750K cal- salary. Carolina, Piotr Kuchetkov, 842K salary. Boston's Jeremy Swayman, 925K. And Dallas's Jake Ottinger, 925K. My question for you, Matt, is will we see another Jordan Bennington type of scenario this year, or who will it be? Where they come on a like, left field? Yeah, is it going to be an, an off, a one-off heater of a goalie to win the cup? Because <sighs> looking at it now, there are six of them in play, and who knows, some of them might get their other guy back in, but six guys out of 16 right now to get it done. Right. I mean, hope. I, I looking at these names, too, Kachetkov, uh, Carolina might, uh, I still think Carolina is going to take the series. I, that's my personal belief. Cause I think even with, uh, that third string, uh, back up in there, I think just as a team in whole, they're going to just push through the Bruins. I don't think he's going to be the reason for it. Uh, but I feel like Louis, De- it's, uh, it's up in the air between Louis Domingue and Connor Ingram, the Connor Ingram last night, today's Friday, uh, May 6th last night, uh, Connor Ingram was got the nod against uh, Colorado Avalanche, and he was lights out. But Nashville Predators are just not good. Um, I, I, 
that question is kind of weird for me. We're just like, I don't think we're going to see it. Uh, there's, there's the teams that you're talking about right now, the goalies in, are teams that are just not going to go any further in the playoffs, in my personal opinion. Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I don't see Nashville beating Colorado personally. Mm-hmm. I think Willie Huso could get the job done and get past uh, Minnesota, but he's got Colorado next round. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, Dallas could get it done against Calgary, and if they do, they, they kind of have a, a decent chance to get by. Um, but, again, I don't I don't think they'll get it done with Jake Ottinger. No. Um, Igor Shesterkin over uh, Louis Deming, I think, is obvious. Mm-hmm. Either way, Swayman or Kachekov are making it out of the first round, so – I think that's really the only opportunity here. And, yeah, I think one of those teams might be able to get it done. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, I don't think so, man. I think that's just not a strong enough uh, netminder. Yeah. Um, but I think people would have said the same thing about Jordan Bennington, Jordan Bennington. the year that the St. Yep. Louis Blues won. So just out of left field. Definitely weird to see. Got me thinking about uh, – actually, I meant to look into it, but every time I think about it, I'm out where I can't have my phone in front of me. And uh, I was thinking about all these goalie – uh, changes and goalies just going out. When I thought of 2013, am I wrong? 2012, 2013, the Bruins versus the Caps. And uh, they had, I think at the time it was Semyon Valamov, and he went out injured. And uh, Holpe went in for here him, comes right? Holpe, this random goalie that no one's really ever heard of. And we're just like, oh, we got this in the bag. And he was lights out. For I think that the rest of that series and I think the next series as well, and here like he just comes out of nowhere, becomes like the starter, becomes the one of the one of the better goalies at the time for a while, and uh, I don't know, it could be one of those. Yeah, and I think Holpe looking back on that is kind of the building block that changed the culture for the Capitals and allowed them to win that Stanley Cup recently, mm-hmm. and I think that that really changes things in in a team like. Even St. Louis, now every year they're a competitor. People look back and say, oh, that makes sense because they had Bennington that year. They went on that run, and they won the Cup. So seeing them in the playoffs now, people look at them differently. Same thing with Washington. They've they've done it. They've been there before, and they'll always have a chance now because of it, I think, you right. know, until everything blows up at the end of the day. 100%. All right, we ready to get into the matchups here? Let's do it. I got some Edmonton and L.A. notes for this first series. We have Edmonton's Mike Smith after game one. Uh, He had lost 10 consecutive playoff games, including all six he had played with the Oilers. Game two, he bounces back and leads Edmonton to a 6-0 shutout win over the Kings. And then a little funky note here, uh, in L.A. game three, they're now the away team. The arena staff in L.A. would not let the Edmonton Oilers players use the nets outside of their normal practice hours before game three. Practice didn't start for another 10 minutes, so they weren't quote-unquote wrong for doing this. What did you think about that? From... From that clip that we saw, the guy who was on the bench who must have, I don't know who he was, but he, he said this is like a normal occurrence, and it's the arena's, the arena can do that. Though, I, 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 I don't know. I guess to, to reach their own and to reach what arena wants to do, uh, I just thought it was a little too messed up that you have two arena employees literally just holding the nets from the players you know it's kind of a dick move well look at it like this right the ice is done you're ready to go it's 7 50 and your game starts at eight the, mm-hmm. the rink guy can tell you you're not on the ice till eight when right. you go to your men's league and that's exactly what they did you don't have the ice till 11 30 right so we're going to keep these nets until it's time right. they're they're lucky they got to get on the ice and skate imagine if they're like no you can't even come on the ice yet right. too. i don't know i did think it was a it's kind of a jerk move but i think that it changes you know the perspective of the game and Maybe it can change the outcome. You can play some head games, but it also could be bulletin board material. Like, screw these guys. They wouldn't even let us warm up. They're up 2 nothing over the Kings right now as we're recording. So yeah. maybe that's how they're looking at it. First period's about to be wrapping up here shortly. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how this goes up there. Uh, this is game three. They're tied 1-1 so far. Um, I'm really liking the Kings. Um, I think I definitely have the O's in here, but uh, the Kings – Jonathan Quick just randomly came on like this absolute hot streak, and he's still kind of riding it. Uh, solid, solid goaltending, even from even even against uh, the they Edmonton lost. Oilers. They lost six nothing game two. I know it's <laughs> that's that's the uh, that's where I look weird. But if you just look at like the saves he's made, position and everything, I, I think he's just been solid for a Kings team that I don't think should even. Be I mean the West is weird, but I feel like it was just a Kings team that we talked about a few weeks ago. They're just like, where the hell did they come from, you know? And realized that Quick's kind of been uh, helping them out, win some games, to get them in that spot. 
But one thing as a goalie, too, watching Mike Smith has been absolutely aggravating. Um, what is he, like 6'4"? He's a tall dude, like 6'3", 6'4". And for some unknown reason, just likes – he's got, like, old school, like, Henrik Lundqvist type where he just plays low in the net, like low in the crease. And you're like, what are you doing? There's so many goals that you can look back at when – Mike Smith is low in the crease. They're just like, listen, if you came out just a little bit, like your height and like just how big you are would, would have stopped that puck. And I'm, I'm like, what goalie coach do you have that's saying like, yeah, this is, this is the right move. It like, to me, I, there's no goalie coaches out there right now. That's like pushing for low crease in the net type like style. And it's definitely not working for Mike Smith. And I mean, this is the reason why you see in all those uh, losses. It's like, you gotta come out, make yourself look big, square up. I, I just, it, it, it was aggra- aggravating as hell watching him play, but I don't know. I think this is where uh, – that's how the Kings got to where they are with the 1-1 tides. Yeah, I think that's a really good breakdown on Mike Smith. I think that the Kings engine is going to burn out soon, and I think I'm I'm seeing it right now. Personally, I, I don't think they're going to have enough to get it done at this point. The 4-3, they scraped that first win out. 6-0 is pretty demoralizing, and now they're down 2 nothing going into the second period. Mm-hmm. I just don't think they'll be able to. The Oilers' firepower has been too much. Mike Smith hopefully has figured it out and turned it around. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I just think that I'm very much not happy with the pick that I made. But (laughs) I would love to see them get through to the second round is all I'll say. The Kings was your uh, out of of left field pick. Yeah, Yeah. my upset. So we'll we'll see if that pans out. (laughs) Um, We got Calgary and Dallas next. I didn't have any real notes put down on this one. The series is tied one to one. Game Mm -hmm. one, the Flames ended up winning one to nothing in an absolute barn burner. Just everybody's putting the puck in the back of the net there. And game two was a two nothing Stars win. So this is probably the only series right now that has under four goals scored for under three goals scored technically for their series. So I think this is the biggest weird one uh, for me. I I remember seeing this and I remember when we were making the picks like oh flames easy. I, I don't know if I said flame was it the flames I was saying that was gonna sweep the stars. I know I had a sweep in there somewhere, but uh, I, I don't know what happened with the Calgary Flames this game. Two zero uh, st- uh, for the stars is uh, pretty uh, pretty crazy in my in my opinion. With uh, Jake, o- I, although Jake Ottinger is in, like a great goalie, but. Uh, just the team in general, just like how did you manage to do two nothing and shut down the uh, Calgary Flames? Is yeah, and astounding. I mean, I, I saw this coming out of it. If I was a betting man, I would have taken the under in this series just mm-hmm. because Dallas hasn't been able to put the puck in the net outside of the three players that scored forty five percent of their goals this season. But for them to be able to shut the Calgary Flames down and limit them to three goals is very impressive. I think. Right. Um, going back to the picks, you did have Calgary at five. I have them in six. Five. So okay. we'll we'll end up seeing what happens there. And actually, before we go any further. If you don't mind, I'm going to jump in and rattle off some picks here. Alex, our listener, jumped in, and we also have the great one throwing his picks into the ring, so I have Wayne Gretzky's picks for us, too. (laughs) Uh, Alex has the Edmonton LA series. He has LA in six, Calgary in six, which him and I picked exactly the same there. Uh, Minnesota, St. Louis, he has Minnesota in seven, and then Colorado, Nashville, he has Colorado in five. So he picked the same as you there. Mm -hmm. Then we have Florida, Washington. He has Florida sweeping and Tampa in six, same as both of us. And then... Rangers in six and Boston is in seven, the exact same pick as you. Wow. Going on to the great one here. Edmonton in six, Calgary in six. He has St. Louis in six, Colorado in five. Florida with a sweep, Tampa wow. in seven. Rangers in six, and Carolina in five. And for Stanley Cup champion picks, we have four different teams on this now. I picked Colorado. You stuck with – I'm sorry, you picked Florida. Mm-hmm. Alex picked Minnesota, and Wayne Gretzky picked Carolina Hurricanes to win the Cup. Oh. So pretty interesting there. Just wanted to wrap that one up. I think we're pretty good on the Stars and Flames, right? They'll be playing tomorrow night for us. They'll so. be playing. This, uh, this is all just beginning. They're tied 1-1 in the series. So uh, uh, by next week, we'll definitely have uh, – I think they'll every, everyone will figure each other out, you know? Yep. Next up, we have uh, Minnesota and St. Louis. Game one, the Blues ended up winning 4 to nothing. And game two, we ended up getting a six to two win for the Minnesota Wild. Yeah. And before we move on any further, we got a three nothing lead for Minnesota right now. Series is tied one to one, so they could be going up two to one here. And in game one, uh, Minnesota's Jared Spurgeon ends up getting fined five thousand dollars for laying a dirty cross check on the ankle of Pavel Buchnevich while they're both down on the ice. Not a very captain like move, I'd say, from Spurgeon. I think the frustration was boiling over, and I think 
I said that St. Louis ended up winning that game 4 nothing, so mm-hmm. I can understand him being pissed off, but right. no reason to be doing that. Nope, not at all. Uh, Wild, uh, I just got reminded this week that uh, I'm sitting there like maybe maybe switch off Flurry uh, from game one, but I just realized that his contract uh, literally states that in order for a p- uh, draft pick, uh, he's got to play a certain amount of games in the playoffs. So this is why Flurry's probably got the nod, but I don't know. Flurry would get the nod regardless for me, uh, just for his veteran presence in the Stanley Cup final. So uh, the, the way I looked at it, outside of his contract, I thought Cam ha- Talbot played really well this season. It was mm-hmm. hot leading into playoffs, yep. and I thought the veteran presence on the bench would be what they would need going in. Flurry put up a goose egg. I'm sorry, Flurry. Yeah, Flurry put up a yeah goose egg. Goose egg. Oh no. Never oh mind. Boy. He got blown up for for nothing. So no, he he got blown up. And then the next game they end up winning six to two. So, uh, and now they're up three nothing right now. So he's he's rocking. I don't want to say the word, but uh, <laughs> halfway through the second period, it's looking pretty good, is what I'll say there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I I guess that Flurry, ha- I mean, he has the experience. He's a bit older. Um, in the at the end of the day, he has two cups that he earned himself, and one from Matt Murray. Yeah. And yep. then he fell short with. The no, maybe it's one and one. How many cups did the Penguins win? Wasn't it only two? Crosby should only have two cups, right? Crosby. One with Matt Murray and one with Flurry. Oh yeah, I, I uh, two thousand eight, two thousand nine always always messes me yeah. up. Yep, yep, yep. So so, so he's got one that he earned, one that the, the backup earned, and then yep. he made it to the finals with, with Vegas, Vegas and lost. And lost. So yep. who knows? Um, I mean, it, it's never a bad decision to go with the guy who's been there and has the experience. So we'll, right. we'll see how it pans out for them. But this um, is. This is just a weird, a weird one. It, this the Wild Blue series can go either way. Just in in my opinion, Huso, Flurry, very I interesting. Just... Both of sorry to interrupt. Both of these teams went with the opposite of who we thought was starting. We yep. thought Bennington and Talbot were going to be playing, and now it's Flurry, Flurry and Huso. And Huso. Yep. So it's kind of weird to see. So it's, and uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here, but that sick goal from uh, oh Erickson Eck. Erickson Eck, uh, on. Just unreal. So we're seeing, we're just seeing like these skilled guys get it done. So and he's one guy that I called out and said that him and Kaprizov would not be enough to to get it done for Minnesota. And he's putting that right in my mouth. Oh yeah, Kaprizov um, with a hat trick last game. Did he? No way. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. I didn't see that. That's sick. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Erickson Eck goal was awesome, man. He's just right in right in front of the net, low slot, splits the D. Awesome stick handling to get around, and then comes basically too far past the bottom of the goal line, brings the puck back out front and just tucks it. It was great. Good to see. Love it. Love it. So we're all set on that one. We got Colorado and Nashville next. Uh, Let's see here. Colorado and Nashville. We had a 7-2 absolute blowout, the game one for Colorado (laughs) getting the win. And game two, we had the Predators not bouncing back at all in a 2-1 overtime loss. But uh, you had some notes there on that one, right? Yeah, Connor Ingram. That was his fourth uh, game in the NHL. Uh, that was last night, and watching that game was uh, it, it, it was just an eye-opening experience. We're just like, oh, this Avs team, uh, they have the potential to get to the Stanley Cup Finals just the way they're playing because uh, Connor Ingram was the only reason why this game went into OT, and as a goalie mentally, you're just like, just the way they're playing, you're like, Connor Ingram is going to let that goal in at one point, and there's no other way about it. Um, Darcy Kemper was absolutely cold throughout that entire game. I feel like it was like beer league where the Avs were just all over the Preds in, in, the, uh, in their offensive zone against Connor Ingram and the team. I think the Preds did good uh, defensively uh, in front of Connor Ingram, but defense and good goaltending does not score goals. And they could not get any offense off of uh, Colorado Avalanche. And uh, with that said, uh, we are going to see a sweep, a possible sweep, or if Nashville could just get lucky, maybe win one. But it's it's either a sweep or uh, the uh, Colorado is going to take five. Is exactly what I saw from last game. But Connor Ingram, I swear to God, after that game, it was just like he is gonna kick david riddick out of that backup spot for uh for 
Nashville Predators and back up UC Saros. That's exactly what I saw right there at last night. Yeah, I think he's going to be the future. I don't know what Riddick's contract looks like, but they may be moving on from him. They could probably sell high on him and get mm-hmm. Ingram up and in there. Right. Uh, Darcy Kemper, um, not, to, not to poo-poo what you said, but right. it went into overtime, so it's, it's extra innings here. 26, 25 shots, 25 saves on 26 shots. Um, he did see a bit of action, but that's kind of, like usually about 30 is, is three solid periods. So, yeah. And they actually went four periods with the overtime. So he, he did see a little less than usual. I wouldn't say that he was dead cold. Uh, Connor Ingham, though, 49 for 51. That guy was red hot the other night, so that was really cool to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, I, I think that's all I really have there. Um, a little savage note leading into game two. Colorado ended up leaving the score from game one up on the Jumbotron for the <laughs> Nashville Predators to look at while they had their morning skate, too. Um, but it, it ended up going overtime 2-1. to one. We got game three tomorrow night, Colorado leading 2 to nothing. So we'll see what happens there. I actually love teams or in arenas doing that stuff. It's just it's just funny as like a fan thing, you know, mm-hmm. just like, no, oh, we're just going to we're going to mess with you. And I'm sure they're going to do the same thing at home. But uh, what's next? What's uh, what's up next on the list? there? Next one we have is Florida and Washington. Game one, this series ended up going to the Washington Capitals. Kind of a surprise little upset to start the series off. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a 4-2 win by Washington. And then game two, we had a 5-1 win by the, the Panthers. They bounced back. Uh, I forget who their head coach is. You're going to shoot me in the head for that. But um, he went on to say that after game one, after the loss, yeah, we need to learn to lose. We need to understand that there's going to be harder games ahead and that the playoffs are not going to be like the regular season. So he's glad that they got their first loss out of the way. They right. ended up winning 5-1 mm-hmm. in game two. And game three is actually tomorrow at 1 o'clock. So it'll be nice to have some matinee games too. That'll be yeah, good. I'll be, I, I'll be crushing I'll, it all day long. That. Yep. Um, series tied 1-1. Uh, game one, Kodak, Kodak Black in the house for the loss. So <laughs> tough to see. Tough to see. <laughs> what uh, What did I have for the Panthers caps? Like how many games? I think I know for sure I had the Panthers, but how, I don't know how many games. Yeah, you have Florida in seven. I have them in five. Oh, it's, okay. a, it's a 1-1 series. Thank God I said seven. Because watching this, like literally after probably the first game, maybe midway through the second game, I said, oh, my God. The Capitals could be a huge upset against the Florida Panthers. I think they have what it takes to maybe – definitely – I feel like this is going seven regardless, but they have what it takes to throw the number one team in the NHL right now, push them aside, and move on to the, in the second round. Yeah, I, I think that them winning game two, five to one, was kind of their bounce back. We got our feet underneath us. We're good, guys. Let's just keep it rolling here. Yep. Uh, Vitek Vanacek I think is going to be the big issue. But at the end of the day, right, we, we – highlight so much how much goaltending is important in the playoffs but looking at the other goalies that are playing and who's playing who's out playing the rest of the league it ends up being these young guys that you wouldn't expect they're they're kind of getting the job done at the end of the day so we'll see how it goes for the rest of the series um that's all i really have there but Mm -hmm. let's go florida go go panthers all right 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 behind you bud next up we have the probably the number one uh Number one upset or shocker of, of a game one here, Toronto and Tampa Bay. Toronto shows up game one and shuts out the Tampa Bay Lightning five to nothing for the first game of the series. Mm-hmm. And then game two, Tampa Bay, same thing as uh, the Washington Florida series. They bounce back and win game two five to three against the Maple Leafs. Um, and right now, actually, I'm sorry, it's now game game three is final two five to two. Toronto is now leading the series. Uh, it seems like the top scores and top line mates on the Toronto Maple Leafs are starting to figure it out and get the playoff feet wet. Uh, Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews have really started to produce. I believe game one, Marner had a goal and two assists. Matthews is racking it up. So uh, it's it's kind of a great thing for Toronto right. to get their first win in, in the series, right, and say it doesn't matter that you won the Stanley Cup back-to-back. We're good enough to beat you, and I think that get, that'll give them the confidence. And honestly – if they can get past Tampa, they're going to be like, this is our year. Like, we, we have it now. Yeah. I think that's that'll generate the magic that Toronto needs. I'll let you go ahead now. Um, so, this this series – What? sorry, can we go back and see what I had? Yeah. I, I guarantee you I did have Tampa Bay. Because yeah, I, I think we both did here. I gave them the old uh, – All the way across the board. The great one, Alex, me and you. Tampa Bay. Everyone said six, except for Wayne says in seven. Wow. So, this this is weird seeing how good the Maple Leafs are playing against the Lightning. I don't know if playoff Lightning, uh, the mental game with us picking, said, oh, my God, these guys are going to fly through it. But... I'm just not betting against them anymore. That's what that is. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like Tampa fucking Bay. Yeah, it's Tampa Bay. But apparently 
Toronto is just coming out of, I wouldn't say nowhere, but Toronto is making us seem like, oh, okay, you guys are not a first-round exit team currently right now, and unless something happens. I mean, anything can happen. It is the NHL playoffs. So this is going to be one of the most uh, one of the most definite uh, round one series to watch as the Maple Leafs and uh, Tampa Bay Lightning. We, will, we were watching the game before uh, recording tonight. and uh, It got very gritty, too. There was a lot of pushing, shoving. There was a good fight, I believe, game one. Uh, not like a fight, but uh, Wayne Simmons, Pat Maroon, Corey Perry, all, all stir in the pot in this game. And a player ends up bleeding at the end of a, a big scrum with Wayne Simmons. I think it was like almost the end of the second period too. It was it was very odd to see, but definitely love to see it, and I love to see the chippiness in, in these two teams. I, I I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. So uh, again, we we're just well, that was game three, but we are just literally two three games into this. So this is all just um, pretty much uh, warm up, get used to each other type of games, and uh, start seeing what. Uh, these players can actually do come playoff time, playoff games, you know? Yeah. Uh, I did have a couple small notes here. Game one, Kyle Clifford earned a five-minute major and a game misconduct seven minutes into the first period of this series for a blindside hit on Tampa Bay's Ross Colton. It was a pretty tough look. Bad to see. Clifford was then suspended for one game by the Department of Player Safety as well. So what do you think about that? I feel like I've been seeing those a lot. Um, we're going to talk about Brad Marchand. We're going to talk about Forbort. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about a few players tonight. That uh, I, I don't think we saw anything like this. You saw this hit, though, right? Yeah. This was ridiculous. This the guy's just... not even looking at him. Puck's already gone. Like, no reason for it, I thought. No. Shitty move. Seven minutes into the fucking first game, too. Like, way to set the tone, bud. Right. So that's probably why it started getting chippy early. Oh, maybe, yeah. And then uh, we also had the New York Rangers old player, Sean Avery, with another hot <laughs> take here to get us talking and clicking about him. Um, he was actually pissed off about Toronto's GM, Kyle Dubas, celebrating after Matthews' goal. And he says, quote, do you do you think you'd ever see Steve Eiserman act like this? I, I, dude, what's wrong with being happy that the team that you're managing scores a goal? I don't know, man. I don't get it. It makes no sense to me. Sean Avery, you're a bum. You just want clicks and views. And <laughs> here's another one. Hashtag Sean Avery. I'm not, I'm not just. I'm not going to add fuel to the flame. Here. All right. I, I know what Sean Avery's <laughs> trying to do. I just nope. Let's uh let's move on to his team series here. We got the New York Rangers and the Pittsburgh Penguins. First game was a barn burner, four to three in triple overtime. What a game that Woo! was. Game two series gets tied one to one, so it's Rangers win that one five to two. And game three will be played tomorrow, seven o'clock. So that three overtime, man, it just like it just threw me back and like reminded me that like, oh yeah, there's no shootout. You just literally keep going till great. someone scores. And imagine being a fan. It must be great, but at the same time, like, holy shit, you know? Yeah, these games all seem to happen in the in the first round. So I got a stat for you here. Igor Igor Shesterkin ended up going 79 for 83 shots, and he couldn't hold on against the Penguins. This put Shesterkin as the second goalie all time for shots faced in a single playoff game, behind Jonas Corposalo, who faced 88 shots in the first round of the 2020 playoffs for Columbus and Tampa Bay. Wow! So the interesting part about that is the top five shots against in a single playoff game were all first round games. Isn't that weird? Wow! So uh, all these games with these massive amounts of shots, probably double, triple overtime, were all in the first round. So I thought that was kind of cool to see. Ah, huh, interesting. And then uh, let's get a goaltending update for Pittsburgh as the series goes on. So mm-hmm. this is a little bit of a spiel for me. Tristan Jari <laughs> is day-to-day with a lower body injury from the regular season. Jari's foot injury has actually kept him off the ice, and he's yet to skate as of Thursday, May 5th. Casey DeSmith started Game 1 for the Penguins, but will miss the remainder of the postseason after having to come out of the game with an injury and undergoing successful core muscle surgery. And then, in that Game 1, Louis Domingue came in to replace him and went on to win the game for the Penguins. Domingue had a great post in, uh, post-game post interview clip where he was asked about what he had in between the first and second overtime. He ends up telling us spicy pork and broccoli. Uh, he was not <laughs> expecting to come into the game, but it seems to have worked. Mm-hmm. And Domingue will be the starting goalie for Game 3 with Alex DiOrio from the AHL's Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins as the backup. Mm-hmm. And DiOrio has actually yet to play in an NHL game, so... There's that for There's Pittsburgh. That. Jesus Christ, good <laughs> luck to you. I mean, they are tied one to one, and we will see where it takes them tomorrow. Uh, better hope that Domingue doesn't go down because it's gonna get weird. Yeah, it's gonna get weird. This is already weird, by the way. We're only yeah. two games in. Some guys playing three tonight, and we're already seeing the whole change. 
You know, I some of the goalies just going down, and you're just like, yeah. dude, what the hell? All of a sudden, I had I, what did we have the Bruins at? I think we're gonna be talking about the Bruins soon. I, but I was like, oh yeah, Cal- Carolina is gonna get uh, gonna get them, you know. And all of a sudden, Carolina lost Auntie Ranta, Freddie Anderson's not coming back, and here's oh, God, I can't Pachekov. remember his name, <laughs> P- 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 and you're like, who's this guy, you know? But uh, I don't know. Uh, who's uh, who's next on the list? Uh, that yeah, we're talking about? last matchup that we have here is the Boston Bruins and the Carolina Hurricanes. Okay. If you're ready to dive so, into that, so that's a good segue into this. Yeah, there so, we go. Uh, <clears throat> so Carolina, as of tonight, uh, leads two to one in the series, even though the Bruins beat them four to two. Um, this oh, this was an interesting game, by the way, for uh, for their third game. Uh, Bruins scored, and uh, who's the guy in the box? Fans went crazy. The sh- uh, the the glass fell off. Hit yeah, him so in the head. there were actually two officials injured during this game in Game Three. As an on ice official was struck by the goddamn bucket boy that shovels the ice. <laughs> the referee didn't have his head up and ended up getting laid out like Lindholm did. And later on in the game, the Bruins uh, scored a big goal to extend their lead. Crowd goes wild, knocks a pane of glass off into the penalty box, and strikes the poor old on off ice official in the back of the head. So uh, a couple of these guys getting hurt. Early just on, just a weird, weird game. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. So I guess good for the Bruins, two to one. Uh, my brother, who's a big Bruins guy, did tell me I have. Uh, we have the whole clearance to shit talk the Bruins, and this must have been in the beginning of the game because I think later on he goes, "No, I take that back." And I'm like, "I know you took that back. You're you're too much of a Bruins guy." That's right. Yep. And uh, but here we are with the Bruins, four to two. Uh, Carolina, man, you're missing your two. You're missing Freddie you're missing, Anderson. The, you're missing the William Jennings Trophy winning goaltenders. Yeah. The two best goaltenders in the league statistically the league. for goals against. Right. Like, no no other tandem has let in less goals than than these two. And you're missing on Toronto. Mm-hmm. You're missing Freddie Anderson. From what I have heard, though, Rob Brindamore did say on Toronto is uh, healthy enough that tonight he could have been a backup. Uh, but he's going to give him another day. So we will be seeing Auntie Ranta back, which is good news for the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah. Um, but with that said, regardless of uh, – I can never remember the goalie's name. Kachetkov. Kachetkov. Even with him in net, the Carolina Hurricanes as a team, just in general, are too big of a players that can lay the body uh, just – all around guys that can beat the Boston Bruins. And uh, I think once Antti Rata comes back into the net, that's when you're going to see the Bruins really struggle here. And you're not going to see another 4 to 2 win like this, uh, mm. as you saw tonight. So I got a uh, score updates for the listeners that haven't been watching. We had a 5 1 uh, win for the Hurricanes in game one and a 5 2 win for the Hurricanes in game two. So they were leading 2 to nothing. Came to Boston for this game and ended up losing 4 to 2. I do have some other notes here. Game two, Pasternak had an awkward run into Antti Ranta as Ranta goes to play the puck. The, cl- uh, the collision initially gave Carolina a five-minute power play for charging, but it was reduced to a minor upon review. There was a lot of talk online about whether or not this was intentional by Pasternak because Ranta ended up leaving the game, and the rookie Pyotr Kachekov had to come in to replace him. He's another guy that only had three NHL games under his belt. This was his fourth, just like Connor Ingram, which was interesting too. Mm-hmm. And then Kachekov ended up winning game two for the Hurricanes 5-2. to two. Lindholm got smoked by Svechnikov this game, resulting in a concussion, and he won't be returning to Game 3. I did not realize Svechnikov was this good of a skilled player and can lay the body the way he, he did, too. Um, and then during Game 2, Marshawn ended up getting into it with Kachetkov, slashing him in the arm, and was fined $5,000 for it. Derek Forbort also fined $5,000 for high-sticking Tara Vinen in the face during the game. And like you just said, Brendan Moore said that Ranta could have played. He was healthy enough to be the backup, and mm. they're just going to give him another day of rest. So right. that's where we're at for that series. So uh, with that said, welcome to the NHL playoffs. Yeah. Uh, this is more interesting than I thought. I think we were talking about the team matchups. I, uh, I had something else in mind, uh, like mentally with like these matchups. But watching them now, you're just like, wow, this is totally different than what I thought. Like the Toronto – and Tampa matchup is just insane to me. The Wild Blues, uh, I still kind of just, I, I, I want to watch, but like also like, yeah, you know, whatever happens, happens, that type of stuff. And uh, I've been watching all of them. I just chuck them on now, seven o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Emma's Emma's hanging out and having a bottle at seven thirty. 
I'm like, I don't care. We're not watching any little kid shows. We're going to watch some <laughs> hockey. You're going to learn how to like it. <laughs> I'm dad. You listen to me. Uh, but I still think one of the uh, one of the best uh, series that I want to watch, like I said before, is the Panthers-Caps series because I think that can go either way at this point now, even though we're just two, uh, two games in and the third coming up tomorrow, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. So the only, the only thing that kind of stinks for us next week when we record on Friday, May 13th, is that all of these series need to end before game six for us to have a set second round. Right. Uh, games six and seven for these series will be played on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we'll, we'll see what we can do next week. We do have a special guest coming on. Uh, my coworker, Josh Bailey, is a big hockey fan, uh, season ticket holder for the Bruins. So he's going to come down and uh, talk shop with us. Maybe we can get some second round picks based on what's set. And he'll he'll be able to give him his analysis and opinion on some of these series and where they stand. So. Right, nice. And uh, something we should have done last week, but we didn't do, or we did. I just can't remember. For all the fans listening in, uh, put in, give us your picks. Let me, let us know what uh, let us know what your picks are for uh, the playoffs. If, even if it's just uh, oh, we did have one on one, Facebook on two. on your post. I don't know if you can pull that one up. We had another fan that that posted them on there. He gave you a comment. He said, put your picks below. I can try and pull it up for you yeah, if you'd I'm like. Yeah, i try to pull it up. Yeah, you, uh, you fill some air. We did get a nice email from uh, Wayne Gretzky, too. That was awesome of him to send his picks in. Oh, so yeah, thanks. Really happy thank, about that. Thank you, Wayne Gretzky. Thank you for listening in to the podcast. He actually podcast. called me. He did? <laughs> wow. That's how big we're getting. He said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say my name out loud on the podcast. All right, you ready for the picks here? Yeah. We got Mike King coming in with the Colorado Avalanche in six, St. Louis in seven, Calgary in five. L.A. in five, Florida in four, the Lightning in six, the Bruins in seven, and the Penguins in six. We also have Dave Blanchett with some picks. I'll add these to the uh, spreadsheet, too. Maybe we can keep these guys going in the second round. Colorado with a sweep, Minnesota in seven, Dallas in seven, Oilers in six, Florida in six, Tampa in seven, Bruins in six, and the New York Rangers in six. Oh. Um... Huh. So to add to that, if you guys want to put in your picks, uh, for everyone listening in, if you want to put in your picks, uh, I'm trying to think what we could do here. You, I'd like to uh, – maybe we can clip this and post it on the Instagram with a one-minute clip and, you know, le- let them comment on the Instagram. You can comment on Matt's Facebook. Oh, you yeah, can, can do that. You can email posttopostpod at gmail.com. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, you Facebook. can you can mail it to Matt's house. I'll leave the address in the link below. <laughs> <laughs> Phone number and everything. Um, yeah, I, yeah, you can do the Facebook. Uh, we have a group page, post to post podcast. Comment on the YouTube video, whatever. Comment on the YouTube video or snail guys, mail. The only reason why I say uh, post post pod at gmail dot com or the Facebook page post post podcast is for all our all our uh, Spotify and Apple listeners who. Uh, who don't listen to the podcast. Oh, don't watch the podcast, sorry. Um, but, yeah, uh, let us know what you guys think, and we'll put this all on uh, Chris's computer, and, and hopefully, you know what would be cool? Doing all that, and by the end of uh, the playoffs, just see where everyone was at. You know. Yeah. Another thing that I uh, meant to suggest to you off the air is I think we should try and get a graphic up of, of everyone everyone's picks, would be which would be kind of cool. Yeah. You know, like me, you, the listeners, and Wayne Gretzky. That'd be cool. Yeah. We'll try and get get something done on that. That'd be nice. We'll put Bill into work. Yeah, that's right. It's not us doing it. My brother Bilo. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, uh, I think we're good with the whole playoff spiel talk. Yeah, I think I could. Uh, my mouth could use a break. I've been, uh, I've been rambling and rattling. So, we got our Florida Panthers jersey up in the back, wishing them best of luck. I um, so we're fifty three minutes in. I think it'll be a good time to end. But before we do, uh, I don't want to end. I didn't really want to end this on a somber note, but I did want to just say something that I told you why I was late today. Um, my my grandfather is not doing well at all um i think uh he might not make it till you know next week even uh he's actually he's got a bed um a bread was a bed was brought to us for the house so he could be around family yeah, he's home on hospice. At, at home that yeah sucks. so uh i did want to um oh, what's the word i'm think trying to think of i did want to dedicate dedicate this episode to him uh because this might be the last episode uh uh, we'll have before um, 
It's pretty cool, man. Yeah, so it's a nice think, thing to do. I think when we do the shot here, it'll be uh, it'll be yeah. dedicated to him. That's great, dude. That's so, good. I'm really sorry to hear that, though, man. Uh, hospice sucks. My grandfather was home on hospice, and uh, it's not a fun time, man. But it no. is it is the best thing for them because it's they're around the people they love, and right. that's yeah. the best send off you can. My mom, have, you know? all my uncles, my grandmother, they're all around him. Uh, just all day for the past. I can't believe how quick it it, it it was just I feel like it was just all of a sudden, but it's it just it's great to see like the whole family able to be at home with him too. So That is cool, man. I think that's what makes me happy about this. Yep. That's awesome. So, uh with that said, uh want to do the shot and uh call it a night. Cheers to Grandpapa Smalls. Is he small or uh your mother's side? Uh that's my my mother's side. So is that shallow? Shallow. Shallow and small, just mm-hmm. like you. I <laughs> got him. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to Grandpa Shallow. The shots are okay, by the way. They're just weak. Yeah. Want well, to tell them what we did, by the way? What did we do, by the way? Twisted. Oh yeah, shots. yeah. We did the twisted shots. We did those last week. What was it? Tropic Thunder or something like the movie? Something Island like Lightning. I think it's like knockoff Tropic Thunder. That was not good, by the way. I don't know what that you just said it was good. They're not bad. You know what it is? So I uh I'm drinking loyal. A loyal right now, lemonade. I think the mix of that and like the whatever's mm. in there messed with me. Yeah. Hmm. That might have been it. But uh, I, I've wanted a beer for like this whole episode too. This sucks. <laughs> I only had one beer while we recorded. <laughs> There's just no time, dude. No time to get up. Nothing. Nothing at all. Before you came down, you were just like, I need to grab my phone charging. I'm not going back up there. <laughs> <laughs> then I had to go back up there. I had to go get my uh, the shot glasses that we didn't even end up using. We didn't get it. Well, but I got my steps in. We'll be here for next week. <laughs> uh, so you want to call us out? Yeah, thank you, everyone, for listening. If there's anything you want to see us cover next episode, let us know. Also, leave your picks in the link in the description below, and we'll see you guys all next week. Bye, guys. Peace.